Hello and welcome to Bulldog TV News, an affiliate of the USA News Network. I'm Terrence. And I'm Kyle. And here's what we have for you today. President Barack Obama arrived in Greece Tuesday morning on the first stop of his final foraging tour as president, the first visit to Greece by a sitting USA president since Bill Clinton in 1999. The first leg of a three-nation overseas tour has taken on a very different tenor following the unexpected election on Donald Trump as his successor. The forces that helped elect Trump analyze about trade, tourism, and migration are some of the same forces ruling Europe and in particularly Greece, which has experienced a deep recession as well as being a main port of the entry to Europe for refugees from Syria. Obama will discuss these items and other issues in meeting with the Prime Minister and President during his final state visit. Obama will also acknowledge that many Western Democrats are seeing Trump-like movements. President-elect Donald Trump is preparing to key fill foreign policy posts. Former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani has emerged as the favorite to serve as Secretary of State, a senior Trump official said. Although Giuliani has little foreign policy experience, the official said there was no real competition for the job as the nation's top diplomat. However, a second official cautioned that John Bolton, a former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, remained in contention for the key post. The New York billionaire also was considering tapping Richard Grinnell as U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, a move that would bring some experience and diversity to his nascent administration. Grinnell, who served as a U.S. spokesman at the U.N. under President George W. Bush, would be the first openly gay person to fill a cabinet-level foreign policy post. The nation's largest civil rights organization say it will closely monitor President-elect Donald Trump in his home in his incoming administration policies and actions to ensure that hard-fought civil rights gains are not without a protract fight. Seven of the nation's largest civil rights organizations criticized the appointment of media executive Stefan Bannon as Trump's senior counselor. The selection of Bannon, a favorite of the alt-right and white nationalist movement, concerned many of the groups, which said they would be prepared to organize and mobilize if necessary. With Republicans in control of the White House and Congress, the groups refused to say what their plans were for opposing any of Trump's policies. The groups also refused to say whether they would seek a meeting with the Trump before or after his organization. Organizers have been planning a series of demonstrations nationwide Tuesday in opposition to the Dakota Access Pipeline. The goal of those 153 events nationwide, including one at Standing Rock with activist Robert Kennedy Jr., is to push President Obama to take action to delay or stop the, uh, or stop the 1,172 mile project through ex executive action. Activists say the message is more urgent and the North Dakota opposition camps are growing since Donald Trump was elected president. Trump's priorities for his first 100 days in office include a restart to the stalled Keystone XL pipeline and across the board expansion of oil, coal and natural production. Mexico is starting to seriously contemplate the possibility that millions of its migrants could be deported, and picture is not pretty. On the proposals put forward by elect President-elect Donald Trump, Mexico could see millions of people streaming back with no jobs available. The country might lose some of the billions of dollars in remittances sent home annually, and some jobless deportees could swell the ranks of drug cartels, spark sparking more violence. Margaret sent home almost $25 billion to Mexico in 2015, and experts say most of that will support the most basic needs of the poorest Mexicans. Trump has suggested that he might seize funds of those immigrants to pay for a border of wall. Amid criticism that fake news sites have contributed to misinformation and increasing polarization among the American public, Google announced Monday night that it will stop allowing fake news sites to use its software. Facebook allowed with a similar policy, according to the New York Times. That shift could be a death knell for popular clickbait sites, cutting off their access to the ads that make them lucrative. In a statement, Google said it will restrict ad surfing on pages that misrepresent, misstate, or conceal information about the publisher, content, or the primary purpose of the web property. The announcement came after criticism 
that searching the phrase who won the popular vote returned a false news story on an obscure right-wing blog that Republic presidential nominee Donald Trump had won the popular vote in last week's election. Gwen Ifo, co-anchor of PBS News Hour, with, jo with Judy Woodruff and a veterinarian journalist who moderate two vice presidential debates, died Monday of cancer. She was 61, a former reporter for the New, for the New York Times and the Washington Post. It will switch to television in the 1990s and cover policies in Congress for NBC News. She moved to PBS in 1999 as host of Washington Week and also worked for the nightly news hour program. President Barack Obama on Monday praised IFO for informing two today's citizens while also inspiring a young generation of journalists. Gwen was a standard beer for, for courage, fairness, and integrity in industry going through some change. Said Sarah Jess, PBS News Network executive producer, she was a mentor to so many across the industry, and her professionalism will, was respect, respected across the pro spectrum. She was a journalist, journalist, and set on an example for a rounder. HBO has given second season pickups to its trio of new fall series, fantasy drama Westworld and comedies Insecure and Divorce. The renewals are a welcome relief after a tough year in which HBO suffered a big miss with the period drama vinyl amid internal changes. Westworld, and in particular, had a lot of writing on its success as HBO looked to restock its drama series with bench with its tenfold original Game of Thrones, now heading into its final two seasons starting next summer. Each of the trio were renewed for ten episodes. Quarterback Eli Manning delivered a close call victory for the Giants over the Bengals 21-20 in the Monday night football feature game. While the Giants went into halftime with a 14-10 lead, 10 unanswered by the Bengals carried over into the fourth quarter. With Manning threw a fourth and a fourth and goal gamble to rookie receiver Sterling Shep Shepard that proved to be the game winner. Odell Beckham Jr. caught 10 passes to 97 yards in touchdowns, while Rashad Jennings worked for 87 yards on 15 carries. Carries. With college basketball underway across the nation, only one team can claim four consecutive national championships and 75 games without a loss. The University of Connecticut women's team extended that streak last night to 76 games, winning their season opener by outlasting 12th ranked Florida State 78-76. Florida State actually had a chance to win a three-pointer fell short. You was able to hold court to the buzzer. Nafisa Collier stormed the court, leading the score sheet with 28 points and 8 rebounds for the winners. The win marked the first time UConn won a game by less than 5 points since defeating Georgetown in 2011 Sweet 16. In Division I men's ball, number 3 Villanova outlasts number 15 Purdue, 79-76. Number 11 Xavier took down Buffalo, 86-53. And number 12 Louisville crushed Williams and Mary 91-58. On a women's court, number one, Notre Dame rooted Fordham 67-36. Number two, Bayer B number nine, UCLA 84-70. And number four, South Carolina topped in number seven, Iowa, I mean Ohio State 92-80. The Pacers backed a balanced win to beat the Magic 88-69. Five faces in double figures were led by C.J. Miles, 16-point effort off the bench. All-star Carmelo Anthony and big man Chris Stapps Przingis each scored 24 as the Knicks topped the Mavs 93-77. Tobias Harris's 22 points powered the Pistons past the Thunder 104-88, despite another double-double effort from Russell Westbrook, who led all scorers with 33 points, 15 rebounds, and 8 assists. The Pelicans squeaked by the... Celtics 106 to 105 to earn their first home win of the season. And David led the Pelicans with 25. Well, Irish Isaiah Thomas of the Celtics scored 37. James Harden put on a first quarter clinic, meet netting 23 of those 20 33 points as the Rockets paced by the 76ers 115 to 88. The Spurs outlasted a fourth quarter rally from the Heat to win their third straight 94 to 90. Kawhi Leonard scored 24 points and 12 rebounds for the winners. Mark Gasol scored 22 and veteran Vince Carter scored 18 to lead the Grizzlies 
102 to 96 over the Jazz. Chris Paul had 21 points and nine assists, and Blake Griffin had 20 points in the Los Angeles Clippers, 127 to 95 route of the Brooklyn Nets. In a lone hockey match on Monday night, the Lightning shut down the Islanders four to nothing. Andre Vasilevsky kept the Tampa goal clean all night by recording a perfect 34 save on 34 shots. That's all we have for you today. I'm Terrence. And I'm Kyle. And join us again tomorrow for the Bulldog TV News and affiliate of the USA News Network.